Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Tuesday, January 11th, and this local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow you. A new self-storage facility is coming to Palm Coast. Amy Cherry reports. Despite fierce opposition from neighbors. Many residents of Hidden Lakes and Tuscana development are completely opposed to it. We have many concerns about a very large building bring untold amounts of only not only cars but travel trailers with cars attached on the back, boats of all sizes, moving vans and other trucks that would be ut- utilizing this facility. I am adamantly opposed because it will produce increased crime, increased traffic, and decreased property values in Hidden Lakes and Toscano. I'm concerned about traffic. I'm concerned about noise. Secure Space seeks to offer nearly 300 covered RV and boat spaces in addition to more than 95,000 square feet of self-storage units on the 3800 block of Old Kings Road. Palm Coast City Councilman Nick Kloof has voted for the rezoning that will bring the storage facility to the area, fearing the city could face a lawsuit if they don't approve it. You'd be able to argue in a court of law that this is less impactful than some of those previous things that we've approved. And I, I'm just speaking from experience here that we can expend political capital and try to, you know, slow this down. But if we can't come to a consensus on our council on why this is going against our land development code, that we're going to have a hard time in a court of law trying to say this rezoning is not consistent with our land development code. Councilman Ed Danko supported the rezoning as well, saying there's a strong need for more storage in the city. Two years ago, I sold my camper. And I sold my camper because I had to drive 45 minutes to St. Augustine because at the time I couldn't find any place to keep it and I certainly couldn't keep it in my driveway for more than a couple of days. I basically got tired of driving and got rid of it. If this had been built across the street from me, I probably would have kept my camper and I probably would have stored it in there. The rezoning was approved in a vote four to one with Councilman Victor Barbosa casting the sole no vote. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. New donated benches were slated to go up this upcoming weekend in Veterans Park in Flagler Beach as part of a major rehabilitation project spearheaded by Flagler Beach City Commissioner Ken Bryan. But Bryan has had to postpone the volunteer event due to a spike in COVID-19 cases. I was at the city hall talking to my city manager and he's made me aware of uh, multiple employees that we've actually had to uh, put on sick leave. They've gone home. We've had a couple that's been already sick. And we spoke to some of the health officials and they've indicated to us that the, the infection rate in Flagler is uh, over 20% now and it's starting to see them go up. And uh, just bearing on caution, uh, I'd rather for uh, us to just postpone this until a later date when uh, it's not uh, such a high risk that people might get sick. I mean, I want it to be an enjoyable event and, you know, beneficial, but I certainly don't want people to get sick. Brian says he'll announce a new date when COVID-19 cases start trending downward. Flagler County Sheriff's deputies get a surprise after they pull over a speeding driver. Rich Petschke explains. Sheriff Rick Staley says it happened last Saturday in the area of State Road 100 West and Water Oak Road. The individual had no identification and gave a fictitious name. And when it was discovered that the name was fictitious through our rapid ID system, she locked herself in the car and rolled up the window and was acting like she was going to flee. Fortunately, deputies were able to de-escalate the situation and ultimately get her to surrender without further incident. Staley says there was a good reason for her to try and take off. Turns out she was wanted for two active warrants in Putnam County and was driving on suspended driver's license. So she was taken to the green roof end. He says this incident is a prime example of how new technology the department employs is so important. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. Several heavily used pedestrian bridges are getting a makeover. Karen Johnson has more. The city of Palm Coast will make repairs to the Rimfire Drive pedestrian bridges due to deterioration. The bridges are part of the pedestrian walkway near Rimfire Elementary School. Brittany Kershaw is the Director of Public Information and Engagement for Palm Coast. 
the Public Works Special Projects crew is out there. They're taking away the old decking and they're replacing it with marine grade materials to make sure that it lasts a lot longer than the original. And they are going to be out there for the next four to five weeks completing these two bridges. Kershaw adds the construction will not impact people utilizing the sidewalk. There will be cones marking the construction areas, giving pedestrians or bicyclists the ability to travel around the cones to continue on their way. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. The Flagler Beach City Manager says business there has been off the charts. William Whitson, however, does not take the credit for it. I think it's Mother Nature that's helping us a little bit now with the warmer weather. It's really brought out a lot of extra visitors. He said that in 2022, he expects some new businesses in the city. The old Martin's restaurant is going to change to a steak place. Whitson said that there's even a small business grant program coming online through the city of Flagler Beach. You can listen to the business report on Saturday mornings at 10 here on WNZF and anytime on the Flagler radio app. Tomorrow, more on that business grant program in Flagler Beach. From the WNZF newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.